In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build a WordPress website using Elementor Pro and the cloud platform. So we've got everything contained inside the one location. Now, before I start, this is a sponsored video by Elementor. But as always, there's no opinions, just a demonstration on how you can build your first WordPress website using this particular setup. So before we start, let's take a quick look at what we're going to be working towards. It's not going to be an identical duplicate, but what I am going to show you is the core skills and topics and tools you need to be able to create something very similar yourself. As you can see, this is our homepage. We've got our navigation set at the top, our header, a large hero image with a quite a cool looking water effect underneath it. We've then got various different sections for our blog. If we hover over, we've got animation effects. We can click to go and take a look at the archive for sailing, scuba diving, or paragliding. Scrolling down again, this will show us the latest posts, which again, we can click on and go and take a look at the post itself. Scrolling down again, you can see there's some more options inside you right the way down to a footer at the bottom. If we come in and take a look at something like one of the posts, We've created a custom looking layout with custom dynamic data inside it. Scrolling through, you can see information about the author. We can go to the previous post or the next post. We can share this information on social media, all those kinds of cool things. So this is a really good starting point to understand how to use the Elemental Cloud Platform and Elemental and Elemental Pro together to create your own custom websites. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and purchase our cloud platform setup. As you can see at the time of doing this, we have a 30% discount, but normally this is $99 per year, and that gives you the 12 months license to Elementor Pro and your cloud hosting, SSL certificate, and basically everything you need to get up and running building your WordPress website, all in that one platform. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on buy now. Next, we need to go ahead and either create an account or if we've already got an account, we can simply log in and then continue with the process of purchasing. So once you've gone ahead and signed in, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and put any of the details that you need in to complete your account. So your billing information, your card details, those kinds of things. So again, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll move on. Once I've put all my details in, I can now simply go ahead, click on the continue button. And that'll take me over then to the payment options. And as you can see, we can choose to pay by card or we can go ahead and use PayPal to set everything up. For this example, I'm simply going to go ahead and use PayPal. Once everything is completed, I can simply hit pay now and that's going to complete the entire transaction process. We're then ready to go ahead and set up our cloud account. Now at this point, I can either go to my account, I can start creating my website, or I can go ahead and download a copy of my receipt. So if you're doing this for a business and you need those receipts, you can simply access it directly from here. But you still have access to that inside your account anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the Start Creating Your Website so we can go through the process of setting everything up. So we'll choose Start Creating Your Website. That takes us through now and asks us a couple of questions. We can go through a very simple wizard to complete this aspect of setting our website up. So the first thing you do is give this a name. We're going to name this one Learn Elemental. We'll click on Next. Then we can see this is going to give us a temporary domain. So we can see everything is set up inside you. If we want to change this, in this example, Learn Elemental to something else, we can do that. And you can easily tie in your own purchase domain. So if you've got learnelemental.com, for example, we can go ahead and we can set that up in here once we've basically set up our cloud account and got the basics in place. So don't think that this is going to be a case of what you put inside here is what you're stuck with. You can change this to whatever you want later on down the line with any of your own custom domains. As you can see, this gives us a little tool tip to tell us basically exactly what I've just said. So we'll say, got it to that, and we'll click on Next. Now this asks us what kind of website are we going to start creating? Is it a portfolio, a blog website, an online store, or a business or corporate website? For this example, let's go ahead and say this is going to be a blog. So we'll click on blog and we'll click on next. This then will show us a range of kind of templates we can take a look at using if we want to. Various different options. You can see we can break this down to going back to the portfolio blog online store and so on. And if we change this at this point, you can see this will now give us another selection of starter points we can use to get everything started and start building our website. Let's switch that back to our blog for this example. You can see we've also got all categories and we've got various different kinds of categories with the creative, travel and tourism, those kinds of things. So we'll just leave that and set it to creative. 
And again, you can see this now filters things down to suggestions if it doesn't have anything there. For this though, let's just go back to all categories and leave it as it is. And you can see you can set all levels, basic, moderate, and advanced. If you want to, you can say, I'd rather start from scratch, which is what we are going to do. But if you want something as a quick starting point, you could use one of these to get you up and running without having a basic blank WordPress website. So let's go ahead though and say, I'd rather start from scratch so we can build this exactly how we want to build it. Now it's worth noting when you're setting this up, because this is cloud-based, it's not going to be something like shared hosting that can be instantaneous. It does generally take a little bit of time, maybe a few minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes or so to set everything up, to set up your cloud account, to set up the temporary domain, install everything, get all that up and running. So be patient, go away, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever works for you. And once everything is finished, you can come back and then start working on your website. And there we go. After a few minutes, you can see this now tells us everything has been set up. The whole process is ready for us and check our emails if we need to about signing in the details. Now, before we move on and start working with our site, let's just take a quick moment to go ahead and take a look at what happens inside the Elementor dashboard when you create a cloud-based account. Now, if you are like me, you already have Elementor-based sites using the normal WordPress plugin, and I've got a combination of cloud-based websites included inside here as well. So as you can see, if we take a look, this tells us we've got the option for hosted by third party. In other words, the ones that I've got hosted myself using the WordPress plugin, and we've also got hosted by Elementor. If we click on that, that will then show us all of the sites that are using the cloud platform, at which point you can see we can go ahead and we can open up those, set things up inside there. If we click on the three dots or hover over, you can see this opens up options for going to the dashboard of WordPress to edit with Elementor or to manage the website. We can also go ahead, click on the three dots, and that gives us even more options. So we can visit the live website, we can unlock the site, we can view related subscriptions. We can check out when our subscriptions do for renewal, those kinds of things. Copy our subscription details. We can add this to the favorites. If we have several sites inside you, we want to quickly access them. Adding them to the favorites could be a quick and easy way of doing that. And we got create temporary credentials. Let's go ahead and open the dashboard up of WordPress. So now once you log into the dashboard, you're going to see that most things look pretty much exactly the same as they do in a normal WordPress setup because, well, we are just using WordPress. However, there are a couple of things that have been tailored to the fact this is using Elementor on the Elementor cloud platform. You can see the welcome message is a little different, geared towards the cloud platform. And if we scroll underneath, you can see we've got some Elementor-based quick actions, resources, and news and updates. And we can, if we want to, move these around, dismiss them using the normal options in the top corner, and you can see all the normal things inside Jira as well for the normal WordPress. So if you wanted to close these down, we can simply uncheck them. And if you want to bring any of the normal ones we're used to back up from WordPress, we can do that as well. So all those options are inside there in the same way that we used to. Now, before we start building our site, let's take a quick look around and see what's actually installed as part of this cloud setup, just so you can be familiar with what you're going to be starting with. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the plugins. If we hop over into the plugin section, go to install plugins, you'll see inside there, we've got the Elementor and Elementor Pro, because as we know, Elementor Pro is part of the cloud platform. We've also got the activity log and we've got Hello Dolly, which is deactivated. So if there's anything inside here you don't want, you can simply remove it. For example, I don't want the Hello Dolly. We can go ahead and we can delete that from there and click OK. And this operates in exactly the same way as a normal WordPress. So if you want to add extra plugins in, you can. A couple of little caveats to that. There are some types of plugins you can't install on the cloud platform. Put a link in the description below so you can check those out just so you don't get yourself into any problems. Try to install something that's not compatible with the cloud platform. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the appearance section and see what theme or themes are installed. And as you can see, because this is Elementor Pro, the assumption is you're going to work with the Hello theme, which in this example is perfectly fine. But you can still go ahead, search for and install other themes like Astra, Cadence, those kinds of things, if you want to use those to build your website. So nothing changed there, really. Now, apart from that, pretty much everything else inside you is going to operate in pretty much exactly the same way as we can with WordPress. So what we can do now is we can start building this. Before we do, though, let me give you a quick tour of Elementor just in case you're not used to working with it and this is your first time seeing how to deal with this. However, if you want to, you can use the timestamps below to skip past this and take a look at start building things inside Elementor Cloud. But for those that are new, let's go ahead and create a new page and take a quick look at the interface. Let's click on Add New under the Pages section. 
Once you log in, you're going to be presented with the normal WordPress editor, and you could use the normal Gutenberg features inside here using the plus. All those options are available. But you didn't come here for that. You came here to see how to do this with Elementor. So let's go ahead and choose Edit with Elementor for this particular page. So once you open things up, you can see we've got the normal Elementor editor. We've got the options down the left-hand side, and down the left-hand side, all of these are the widgets, or in other words, the various different pieces we can use to create or build our pages. If we open up the option for basics, you can see we've got our inner sections, our heading, images, text, videos, buttons, and so on. We've also got pro features then, so posts, portfolio, forms, gallery, login pages, all those kinds of good things. So we can use these to build our pages, and we'll come back and take a look at some of these as we go through this tutorial. What we can do then is we can go ahead and we can create different layouts. So we click on the plus to start off with. You can see this gives us a basic selection of structures. Now structures are simply a way of beginning to build out your pages. None of these are written in stone. We can use them as a starting point and we can add to them, edit them, remove them, do all the things we need to do. You can see we get simple options like a single row column section. We also get a section that has two columns, three columns, four columns, and so on. So all these are great, quick, easy ways to start things off. If we don't want to use those, you want something a little bit more detailed, we can click on the little folder icon, and this will open up the Blocks, Pages, and My Template section. Now, let me just quickly tell you the difference between these. Blocks are basically pieces of a page. So they could be the header, the navigation, the footer, services, those kinds of things. And everything is broken down in the left-hand section using this particular drop-down. And you can see we've got things like Contact. So we've got a block for Contact and various different options there. Clients footers, you get the idea. And you can simply click on any of these to insert this into your design. If we jump over to the pages section, this is now full page designs. And some of these will have multiple different pages inside there that will make up an entire site. So for example, let's come down to something like this interior design. We can click to open it up and take a look, and this will show us an example of what that particular page design would look like, including all the animations, the effects, anything that's included inside that particular design. We can click Insert if this is the design we want to use, and that will pull everything you see on screen inside this preview window into that page, download all the graphics, add the animations, all those kinds of things. So it's a good, simple, clean, quick way of being able to start building sites without the need to go through all the design process. These are a great way to start things off. We can click on Back to Library to go back and take a look at more. If you want to favorite any of these, you can click on the little heart icon and they will be added into your favorites, which you can then go ahead and filter at the top. So for example, if we click this one, now if we go to favorites, you'll see that's inserted into my favorites. And if I want to remove it from there, I can simply click on the little heart. It's now gone from our favorites. So if we stay inside the pages section, if we scroll down a little further, you can see, for example, we've got travel blog about page, travel blog contact, travel blog homepage. So these are a collection of pages that make up an entire site design, all following the same design aesthetic and all those kinds of things. So if you want something that has your contact page, your homepage, about page, those kinds of things, this is another way of doing just that. The third and final option is the My Template section. Now, currently, this is going to be empty, but if you create your own templates or you create a design and you want to save it as a template, all of your templates will be listed inside there should you need them, call them back up at any point. And you can easily go ahead and you can export these, import designs from other sites you've created, so much more. We don't need to worry about that right now, but the library is a great starting point should you want to quickly build out simple designs using predefined blocks or page templates. Okay, so let's go ahead and just close that down. Let's go back to our first option and create a simple two column section. We'll add that in and you can see that now puts this blue box in and it gives us a visual representation of what that particular section is going to look like. You can see we've got the left column and we've got the right column. We've got this little blue bar at the top the first option with the plus allows us to add another section. If we click on that, that will insert the option for either adding in a template or another one of these predefined sections like we've just seen. We can just click the X to close that down for now. You can click on the X on the right hand side of the little blue pop out and that will completely remove that section and anything inside it. So obviously be careful. You can click on plus. We'll put that back in one more time. And the option in the middle with the six dots allows us to simply edit the section. So we can click on it, and that will open up any of the related options on the left-hand side. The same thing goes then for each of these different columns. You can see when we hover over column, we get this little gray pop-out in the top left-hand corner. If we select that, you can see the options now in the left-hand panel change to edit column. 
If we click on the first one, you can see edit column. If we click back on the blue section at the top to select the entire section, you can see you now go back to edit section. So you can see the options in the left hand side are all context based based upon what you select in the main editing area. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of widgets. First of all, let's add a header. We'll drop that into there. You can see that now pulls the header in. If we look on the left hand side, the panel now shows us all the options for the header. You can see we've got the title, a link if you want to apply it. We can set what size, the HTML tag and the alignment. If we want to change the style even more so, we can jump over to the style tab. If we open that up, you can see in the context of the heading, we can change the text color. We can change the typography. We can apply a text stroke, text shadow, and even use blend modes to get creative with various different effects. Finally, we've got the advanced tab, which gives us option then to things like padding, margins, position, and a lot more. This is where you can refine, add motion, those kinds of things. So lots of options. If we come back out of this and we click on the Rubik's Cube one more time, let's go ahead this time and add an image in. We'll drag that over into our column. We'll drop it underneath our heading. And you can see now the options on the left hand side changed because we've got a different widget selected. In this example, we've got an image. So now we still have content, style and advanced, and each of those will have some similar features, but also a lot of different ones based upon the different widget you have selected. If you want to add an image in, we can choose the choose image option. Underneath that, we can set what size is going to be shown inside our design. We can choose the alignment, a caption, a link, we can come over to the style option again, and we can choose the width of this, the max width, the height. We can set a hover and a normal effect to it, opacity, CSS filters. You can see you can get pretty creative with this. And under advanced, again, we've got those margin, padding, layer, width, position, those kinds of things. So by using these different options, we can very quickly and easily set things up to look the way that we want. Let's go ahead and add one more option in. Let's go and choose a text editor. We'll drop that underneath our image, and you can see this gives us a slightly different set of options. We've got the actual text we want, where we've got a normal, simple text editor, so we can make things bold, italic, underlined. So for example, we may want to make the first two words bold and italic. We can choose those. You can see that updates it inside the preview window, inside the editor, and also in the main window itself. Now, we're not limited to only being able to type and edit directly inside the editor in the left-hand panel. We can just as easily come in and just start editing and adding content inside the main window itself. As you can see, very easy to do. You can also select and highlight the text inside the main window editor itself, and you see you get this little pop-up where we can change various different aspects, and we can even use keyboard shortcuts like Command or Control B, for example, to make that section bold, or we can just use the little pop-out to turn that back off. It's really easy to use in various different ways of achieving the same end results. Okay, there's one final thing I want to show you inside the editor before we move on to the next step. And that is the option for working with responsive design. You can see various different parts of each of the widgets will have this little symbol. Currently, this is showing the desktop layout. If we click, you can see we can see desktop, tablet, and mobile. If we choose tablet, the display will update and we can now go ahead and we can make changes. So anywhere you see that symbol, you can make changes and adjust things based upon what device is currently being used, whether it's a desktop, a tablet or a mobile. So it's very easy to do. We can switch to the next option, which would be the mobile. And again, it'll show us a preview and we can go ahead and set different settings inside there. So we can make sure that our designs look perfect on all the different kinds of devices that we're going to be using. And as we build our pages, we'll take a look at working with mobile options as well. Let's go ahead, switch back out of mobile options and go back to our normal mode. And final thing I want to show you is the navigator. Now you can open this up by using the little option in the bottom left hand corner. We can click on that and that opens up the navigator window. Now we can move this around or we can position this on the right hand side by simply dragging it over and you can see that now positions itself. The design moves over to compensate for it and we've got the little navigator on the side. Now, the navigator can be incredibly useful when you're working with designs. When things start to get more complicated with different nested content, it's much easier to be able to sort of see there's a visual way of working. You can even go ahead and name your different sections to make life easier when you're building more complex designs. So, for example, you can see this shows us a breakdown of everything that's going on on our page design. We've got a section, which is what we inserted, which is this section here. If we open that up, 
Inside there, you can see we have two columns because we inserted a two column section. If we open up our first column, you can see inside there is our heading, image and text editor widgets. And again, we can select on those. And when we select any of these, you'll see the options on the left hand side will change accordingly. So it's the same as choosing these inside the main editor itself. So we choose the image inside the editor. You can see the options on the left hand side update. If we choose the heading over in the navigator, the options on the left hand side change. You can use these to easily move things around. So for example, we may want to move the heading down underneath the image. We can simply click, hold and drag, and that will position that where we want it inside that stacking order. You can also make these invisible by simply clicking on the little eye icon and that removes it from the design. It means that we can easily see exactly what's going on, taking away distractions if they're not needed. We can switch it back on by simply clicking on the eye again and that will bring it back. If we open up the second column, you can see inside there it's empty and it tells us exactly that is currently empty. Now to make life easier, this section may not mean anything. So this could be a hero section, it could be a call to action, could be anything. So it's easier if we go ahead and name it. So what we can do is we can just double click. You can see that highlights it and we can just call this hero. We now just named it. We can also go ahead over any of these and right click and inside there you can see we've got different options. We can choose to edit whatever name we've got this, could be hero, section, the widget name, whatever. You can duplicate, and again, we've got keyboard shortcuts for the most common things. You can copy, paste, paste styles, and reset styles. We'll come on to styles a little later when we start building our pages. You can also save things as a template, or you can go ahead and delete things. So for this example, let's click on delete, and that's now deleted everything from our page. So that's the basics of the editor inside Elementor and Elementor Pro. Now we've seen that, we're ready to move on and take a look at how we can start building pages inside Elemental. So now we're ready to move on and start building the core design for our website. Now during this section, we're going to cover quite a lot of the basics of using Elementor Pro. By the time you've finished it, you're going to have a good understanding of working with normal pages and templates and various different ways in which we can build a website using Elementor Pro. First of all, though, we need to go and do a little bit of housekeeping with logos, navigation menus, those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and do that first of all. So the thing I want to do first is come into appearance and come into themes and customize. And because we're using the hello theme, which is kind of intended to work specifically with Elementor, we've got some really basic things we can set up inside you. Things like our branding, logo, those kinds of things. So let's do that first of all. Let's hop over to the site identity. And you can see we've got the option to select a logo. So let's do just that. Let's click on select a logo. And then we're going to go ahead and upload our logo file. Once that's been uploaded, I can give it some alt text to make sure that we've named it correctly. And then we're going to click on select. I'm going to skip cropping because I want to keep this as it is. And you see that now drops in our logo. Now it looks a bit on the large side at the moment, but we can address that when we go ahead and create our custom header and navigation. You can see we've got the title and we've got the tagline. If we want to set up a site icon or a favicon, we can do that. So I'm going to select the same icon for that. So that gives us our branding. And as you can see, it shows us exactly what that's going to look like when we apply that. So we've got our logo inside there. We've got our favicon inside there. Those things are set up. Let's come back out of this. And you can see if we come into menus, we can go ahead and we can create a custom menu inside you. So let's just do that. Let's say create a new menu. We're going to call this main menu. Menu locations, we're going to set this to be in the header and in the footer. We can override that, but it's useful to put it in there if you're using the default header and footer options. So we'll click on next. And now we can go ahead and we can add in our items we want to add in. So we can say add items. And you can see we can choose from any post we may have created any landing pages, categories, tags, custom links, and so on. So if we come into pages, we're just going to choose one page just so we've got something inserted into our header section when we create the menu setup. So we'll say, click on the first option, and we'll say, that's happy, we'll add that in there, and that's fine for now. We'll just leave that as it is. And we'll come back out of this, and we'll click on Publish. Now you can see if we take a look, everything looks really, really ugly. We've got this placeholder header, this placeholder footer content, these links that look terrible, but we can deal with all of that. That's exactly what we're going to do. So let's exit out of the customizer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom header template. This might sound daunting, but it's actually relatively simple to do. To do it, we simply come into the templates option and come down to the theme builder. If we open that up, 
you can see our screen is now split into two different sections. On the left hand side, we've got all the site parts that we can have as part of our site, headers, footers, archives, single posts, and so on. And then if we take a look at the main section, that does basically the same thing. But what we'll find is when we start to create templates, they'll actually be listed inside this main section. But there's two ways of accessing this. There's two ways of adding any of these templates in. We can simply come over any of these options in the main window and click on the blue plus. Or we can do exactly the same on the left hand side. We hover over, you'll see we get the same blue plus appear. For this example, let's click on the plus for the header. That then opens the Elementor up and opens up the library browser that we saw a little earlier on. As you can see, this is now only showing the header templates we can use as part of our design. And what we could do is we could simply go ahead and use one of these exactly as it is or use it as a starting point to speed up the design process. For this example, though, we're going to start completely from scratch because I want to show you how easy it is to actually do that. So let's click on the X in the top corner to close this down. And this then takes us over into our template page. Now you'll notice we've got various different things that don't really have any relevance to what we're doing. We've got this header, element or header number 46, content area, and all these other bits and pieces. You completely and utterly ignore them. Because we've created a template, all that's going to be basically ignored in this example anyway. Only thing we're interested in is this top section where we can create our template layout. Before we do though, let's give this a name so we know exactly what template this is once we've finished working with it. At the moment, it's called Elemental Header Number 46. It means nothing. Let's come down to the cog in the bottom left hand corner and click on the settings option. And inside there, we can now change this from Elemental Header to something that actually makes sense. So for this example, we're going to call it default header. So now we've done that, we've basically set up the basic starting points. Now we can build out the template. To do that, we're going to come over and click on the plus, and then we can choose from one of those predefined structures. For this example, we're going to choose the two column single section, select that, and now we have a smaller column on the left hand side, which will house our logo, and our navigation will go in the larger section on the right hand side. So what we need to do is click on the plus inside the first column, that will then take us back over and show us all the different widgets available on the left hand side. And we're simply going to search for logo. And you can see we can now drag the logo widget in and drop that into the first section. You can see that now pulls our logo in. Now, obviously, that's way too large. And what we can do is we can easily go ahead and we can customize the size and scale of this. You can see this is using the site logo. Image size is set to full. Or we could set that to any of the other options. And you see that will shrink things down. We could go to thumbnail. But thumbnail can kind of sometimes make things look a little bit weird. Let's put this back to be something like medium to give us a nice set of scaling options. Now, if we come over to the style option, you can see we can set the width, the max width, the height, and all those values inside here. We can use percentages, we can use pixel values, or we could use what's called VW, which is viewport width. In other words, whatever you can see inside your browser window is the viewport, and it will work on the width of that. So you can set 10% of the width of it, 20%, those kinds of things. For this example, though, let's set this to a dedicated pixel value. And we can use the slider. And you can see as we move that up and down, you can see the image grows or shrinks according to what we want. So for this example, let's set this to something like 70 pixels in width. We'll hop back over to the content section. We'll set this to be left aligned. And you can see now our logo is in place. Now, you may be thinking we've got an awful lot of space here that we don't need. Well, we can easily address that. When we come in between any of the two columns, you can see we get this little arrowhead that now goes left and right. This allows us to simply click and drag, and we can rescale the position of this. And you can see we get these little identifiers to tell us a percentage value of the overall section, how much we're taking up in that particular column. So you can see we can set this to 18% if you wanted to. But if you want to be very specific about the size of any of these columns, you can do that incredibly easily too. Instead of selecting the widget, let's go ahead and select the column, the first column. We'll select that, and then you see we've got the options for column width. So let's go ahead, let's click inside there, and set that to 20%. Now, this is working on percentage values by default. And you'll see you can also set up the different values based upon desktop, tablet, and mobile. So you can set up different values for responsive setups as well as your normal desktop setup. And we'll take a look at that when we make sure that our header looks good on all devices. Okay, so we'll leave that set as 20%. We can come over to the next column and click on there, and you can see that basically sets itself to the correct value. So we could say 80% in there to be bang on specific, and now we've set up 20% for the left-hand column, 80% for the navigation column. Speaking of navigation, let's go ahead and click on the plus one more time. This time, we're going to choose the nav menu option. We'll drag that up into that column, 
and you can see now we've got our nav menu positioned in the column and it's aligned to the left hand side which is not what we want so we can easily come in and we can set this to be right and you can see that now goes over to the right hand side let's go ahead and style this overall section and then i'm going to show you one of the problems that we need to address so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this as a white color that's perfectly fine we're going to select the entire section and we're going to come over into the style option and inside there we're going to come down to border and we're going to choose a box shadow just to give this a little bit of shadow underneath it so you can see the header we'll click on box shadow and well, now we can adjust any of these options. So we can see we can adjust the vertical, we can adjust the horizontal if it's applicable, we can adjust the blur, the spread. We can even come into the actual color itself and click on there, and we can then adjust the opacity to make this a lot more subtle. So I want this to be a really, really subtle effect just to kind of get a separation between the header and whatever comes underneath it. And there we go. We've now applied a drop shadow to that header section. And this is probably going to highlight where the problem comes in. If we take a look, our logo looks perfectly fine on the sort of vertical position. However, if we look at our navigation, this is sitting closer to the top and doesn't really look that good. We can deal with that really easily. We can select the, the column. And once we select the column, we can then come in and deal with the vertical align and we can deal with the horizontal align. So we can use these values to set up exactly how and where everything is going to be positioned inside that entire column. So what we're going to need to do is go into the vertical align and then just choose the option for middle. And you can see that now addresses that and positions that into the middle of our navigation. And just to make sure that everything looks the way we want, we're going to go ahead and do exactly the same on the first column, even though it looks OK in this example. We're going to click on it. We're going to set this to be middle as well. You'll see nothing happens on there. But if we change the size of the header, for example, if we come back in and choose this entire section and then go into the layout option and set we want to have a specific height. So we'll come in and change that from default and we'll say minimum height. And we're going to set that, as you can see, 400 in this example to exaggerate the overall effect. So you can see everything is positioned in the center, looking the way we want it to, in the whole header section. So let's go back and take that back off there. We're going to come back into our entire section. And we're going to set the minimum height for this to be 80 pixels high. There we go. So we've now basically created our first template for our header. We can easily come in now and adjust any aspect of this. So if we click on the nav menu, you can see we've got all the options now to control how it looks, how it works. At the moment, you can see it's picking up this underlying green effect. We can change that by simply changing the pointer to something else. So we could say you want to put framed, for example. Now we hover over it. You can see we get a frame around it. We can set this to be none, so there's no effect other than the color change, which is perfectly fine. And that's what we're going to go for. We want something really clean and simple. So that nicely leads me on to the next thing I want to talk about, which is color typography and handling global styling as opposed to individual widget styling. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. We could very easily make sure that we've got our navigation widget selected, come over to the style section, and we could easily come into here and set whatever typography we wanted to. So let's say we want to change this to like Montserrat. We'll choose that. You can see that now picks up the styling. We'll change our size. We'll say we want this to be like 18 pixels, for example. And we'll say we want uppercase and we want to change the style or we want to change the decoration or we simply want to go ahead and adjust the weight on there. Set this something a little bit lighter. So that's basically widget level styling. And the same thing goes then for anything like the text color. So we can say we want to come in and change that to this red color. And then we can come in and say we want the hover state is going to be a different color again. We'll go for blue in this example. And finally, you could come in the active state and you can set that to be red. So now when we hover over, we get the different effects. That's okay, but that can be quite limiting. It means that every time you want to make a change, you've got to come in, open the widget up, and make those changes. There is an easier way using global styling. So let me quickly reset all those values, and then let's take a look at how global styling works. Now, accessing global styling is very, very easy. All we need to do is come to the little hamburger menu in the top left-hand corner, click, and you can see we now have a range of site settings. If we open up site settings, inside here, we now have access to all the global options we can set up site-wide. You can see global colors, fonts, typography, buttons, images, forms, and so on. Now, I'm not going to cover all of these. I'm going to show you quickly how easy it is to set some of the basics up, and then I would suggest going to town and just testing things out. The whole process is relatively simple and straightforward. So first of all, let's open up our global colors. You can see we have four basic starting point colors. We've got this blue, couple of grays, and a green. 
We probably don't want to work with those. We want to create our own custom variations on this. However, you do still need to have these four colors set up because they are system-wide colors that Elementor out of the box uses. So we need to make sure they're there, but we can change the values of those to whatever color we want to. So let's go ahead and change some of these colors. Let's deal with the accent color first of all. We're going to click on that, and we're going to change this to sort of a, a golden yellow kind of color. So we're going to just find a color close to what I want, so one of the beautiful things about working with global colors and global typography in any of these global settings is whenever you want to make a change, any widget or any part of your site that uses that global color or typography setting, when you make a change, everything updates throughout your entire site using the element or site settings option. So it's really, really the recommended way to go about setting up your color palettes, your typography and all those kinds of things over doing it on a widget by widget basis, which is not necessarily particularly flexible. So now we've chosen the color we want to work with. We're going to just click out of that and we've customized our accent color. If we want to change our primary color, we can do exactly the same thing. So we can click on this and we can set this to where we want. So for this example, let's go for a darker kind of gray blue kind of color. And like I say, we can easily come back in at any point and change this to whatever we want. We'll go with that kind of color. So that's dealing with the system colors. We can also go ahead and create our own custom colors and it's simple process. Click add color. It's called new item number something. We can change that to whatever we want. So we can simply double click inside there and we'll just call this global white. And then we're going to set the color. So we're going to click on the little color chip of this example. We'll set that to be pure white. I'll do the same again. We're going to add one more color in and we're going to call this global black and we'll change the color chip to our black color. Now you can reorder these if you want to. So you can simply come over and you'll see that this changes to a little four headed move arrow. We can click and drag that position around, or you can click on the trash can icon to delete that global color. So you have full control over this and you don't have to do this just inside the global settings palette. You can add any color you create inside Elemental directly to the site settings just by simply adding that to a global color. And I'll show you that in a moment. So now we've set up our global colors. We can step back out of this and we can come into our global fonts. So this works in pretty much exactly the same way. You can see we have four system fonts and we have the ability to add custom fonts. So you may have specific sections on your site that require a much bigger header, for example, or a specific type of title, like a pull quote or something like that. You can set up a custom font for that. But what we're going to do is we're going to set our primary. So we're going to click on the little pencil icon and we're going to change this over to Nanito. And we'll choose that option from there. And you can see we can set secondary, text, accent, whatever we want. So text is basically your body text in normal paragraphs and things like that. So we're going to come into there as well. I'm going to change that from Roboto. We're going to set that to Nanito as well. And as you can see, we can set the weight, the size, the transform, all those options inside you. But there's also another way you can do that. So we'll say we're happy with those options. We don't want to add any custom styles at this point in time. We're going to come back out of this one more time and you see we have a typography option. If we click to open up typography, this is where we can now go ahead and set up global values for our normal text, the color that's going to be applied to it, and also links and our H1 through H6. So all these options are available to set up. You'll also notice that we get an option that says, in order for theme styles to affect all relevant elemental elements, please disable default colors and fonts from the settings page. So let's do that. Let's click on update on here to make sure we commit those changes. And now to make sure that everything is going to work the way we want, we need to just simply come into the settings page. I'll open that in a new tab. And you can see we've got these two boxes, disable default colors, disable default fonts. We can select those options. We can save our changes. And then we can close that down. So now we can go ahead and just set up what values we need. So the text color, for example, we're going to click on this little global icon. And that allows us to choose any of our global colors. So you can see there's our primary, secondary, text, accent, and our global white and global black. For this example, let's set this to be the secondary color, for example. Typography, we can do the same again. We can click on the little globe icon, and we can choose from our primary, secondary, text, accent, and so on. Or we can create something totally custom inside you. And then this will apply to the typography settings on our site. Lots of different ways in which you can work with this. I don't want to go into too much detail, though, because we could be all day just going through all of this. So I'm going to quickly set up some values inside here to make sure that everything is set up on the site. And then we're going to go back into our design and carry on working. 
Okay, so once I've set all the values up that I need, I'm simply gonna click on update to commit those changes. And we've set up some of the basics. You can really go to town setting everything you want up inside here using the site settings and the global settings for colors, typography, all those kinds of things. But for now, that covers off the basics. I would really recommend experiment with this to kind of get a real feel for how it all works. So once you've set up all your global styles and everything is configured the way you want, you simply click on the X in the top corner to take you back out of this and go back into Elementor itself. So now if we come over, we can see that we've got our navigation and everything set up. So let's go ahead and click on our navigation. And let's take a look at the typography settings one more time. You can see we've got the little blue option that tells us we can access global options, things like typography, colors, and so on. So we can click on there and you can see this is currently set to primary, but we could set this to, for example, the option for text or secondary. And as you see, each time we select one of those, it updates on the page itself. So we could easily come in and use those to easily change exactly what we want and then use the global set as if we want to change something throughout the entire site. So we set that back to primary and we'll leave those colors and everything pretty much as they are, except for we'll come into the global colors on there and we'll set this to this primary color. So we've got our blue. And again, you can come over to the hover and the active and do the same thing. So if we come over to hover, for example, we could change the global color on there and we'll set that to our accent. And we could do exactly the same if we wanted to on active. So now if we come over, you can see it now changes between the blue color and the yellow color when we hover over it. It's not particularly the nicest looking thing in the world, but it gives you a good idea of how this works. Now, before we move on, let me just quickly show you how you can set a custom value and assign that directly to the global values without needing to go back into the global settings. So let's say, for example, we wanted to change this text color. We can click on the color chip and we could change that to, let's go, for example, this orange color. Now what we can do is we can click on the plus and that will create a new global color. If we click on there, you can see this asks us if we give it a name. So we're going to call this sample orange and click on create. We've now created a custom value and added that to our global color style. Let's come back over into the hamburger menu, go back into our site settings and inside there, let's open up our global colors and you can see there's our sample orange. If we want to remove that, we can simply click on the little trash can and that will then allow us to delete it. So we've now added and removed without the need to come into this to actually go ahead and add colors. Let's go click an update and let's close back out of this to go back to our design. Okay, so we've built our header. We now need to check that it's gonna look okay on mobiles and tablets. To do that, we're gonna switch into responsive mode. We come down to the bottom left-hand side. You can see we've got the option that says responsive mode. If we click on there, we can now switch between three different responsive modes. You can add more, but I'm not gonna worry about that for this example. So let's switch over now into the tablet view. And this now shows us what it'll look like on a tablet. You can see the logo looks perfectly fine, but the navigation, which has now changed to a hamburger menu, looks a little bit wrong. It's kind of positioned in the middle where it needs to be over to the right-hand side. So what we need to do is select the widget, come over then into our options, and you can see if we come into content, we've got the option for a line, We've also got the option for toggle online. So you can see we can set that to be right. And now if we switch back into our desktop view, it's still over the right-hand side, switches back to the normal navigation. If we switch over into tablet view, switches over, we've got the hamburger menu, and it's also positioned on the right-hand side. If we switch into mobile view, things look a little bit weird now. So you can see our logo is sitting above the actual navigation. In this example, we wanna change that. To do that, we're simply gonna select our first column. We'll select it. And we're going to come into our column width and we'll set that to 50 percent we'll do the same thing now for the column underneath we'll select that column come over to the left hand side choose 50 and now everything is positioned side by side and in this example because the logo is quite small that works perfectly fine and if you want to style anything to do with the actual menu itself you can click and that will allow you to go ahead and customize the look and feel of that so that's how easy it is to go ahead and customize various different aspects of your design, switching back and forth between the different responsive modes. Once you're happy, you can click on responsive mode one more time to close it back out. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on publish. So now, because this is a template, we need to give it a condition. And the condition basically says, where and when is this particular template going to be used on our site? So we're gonna click on add condition. And because this is our default header, include entire site is perfectly fine. But you could, if you wanted to, also go ahead and add additional conditions. So let's say we wanted to add another condition. We'll say add condition, and we could say exclude. So we can simply click on exclude, 
click the entire site and say in our archive, for example, we don't want to use that. And then we can choose which archives do we actually want to attach this to. So it kind of gets a little bit more complex from this point. So I don't really want to bog you down with how to do this. It's a bit more of an intermediate level tutorial kind of thing there. But it's very easy to set up multiple conditions using includes and excludes to go site-wide or right the way down to very specific parts of your site. So let's get rid of that second option inside there. And we're going to just stick with the include entire site. We'll click save and close. And that's our header section template created and the condition set up now for the entire site to use it. So let's go ahead and test that out. Let's come out of Elementor. Let's exit back to our dashboard. And let's just open up and preview our, our site. And you see, there's our header. Forget everything that's underneath it because that's just placeholder information. But our header is now in place. Our navigation is all set up, ready for us to go. Okay, so now that we've seen how to create our first template, building it from scratch, let's go ahead and create the footer template, but let's use one of the predefined templates as a starting point. So go back into our theme builder, you'll notice now because we've created our first template, we get a preview of the template and all those other placeholders have kind of gone. So we can use the option down the left hand side to add new site parts in, or we can click on the add new in the top right hand corner. If you want to make changes to this, we can simply come in and edit this from here. So if we click on it, you can see we've got the option to edit this, or we can click on the three dots to export it, trash it, or rename it. You also see the conditions that have been set up for this, and if we need to make a change to those, we can click on the edit conditions to make changes. For this example though, let's go ahead and just add in our footer. So let's go to the left-hand side, over footer, and click on the blue plus. That now, like we saw before, takes us into the library, so we can go ahead now and find a footer that we think is a good starting point for our design. Now for my example, I want to keep this relatively simple and clean. What we're going to do is we're going to choose this option. We can click on insert, and that will then pull out all the assets, insert that into our page, and you can see that's now positioned at the bottom. If you want to make any changes to this, we can simply click to come in and make changes to any of the individual widget sections inside you. If you want to change colors, typography, anything at all, we can do that. For now though, we'll just say we're happy with it. We're going to come into the cog in the bottom left-hand corner one more time, and we're going to change this to default footer. Once we've done that, we've now named it. We can click on Publish, and we're going to add our condition, and include entire site is perfectly fine for this example. So we'll click on Save and Close, and that's our footer now created, inserted, and everything is set up. So now we're ready to create the home page. Let's hop over into the Pages section, click on Add New. So let's call this Home Page. We'll click on Save Draft, and we'll click on Edit with Elementor. So this is now the preview window for our homepage. You can see our header and our footer are already in place because they are global templates. And everything inside that is what we can control, edit, and create whatever we want. First thing I want to do, though, is you can see homepage is written in the top corner, which we don't really want. So we need to get rid of that. It's very easy to do. So you come down to the little cog in the corner for the settings, open that up, and just check the option that says Hide Title. Once you do that, the title has now been completely removed. So let's just create a new section at the top, which we're going to put a nice hero image in and a call to action for what we want people to do, find out about our blog, those kinds of things. Let's click on the plus. For this example, we're going to set this to be a single column section. So we'll select the first option. Then we'll make sure we've got that selected and we're going to set the actual height on here. So let's change the height to minimum height. And we're going to use the viewport height option or the VH option to set this up to allow it to grow and expand based upon the type of device that they're actually being viewed upon. So we're going to come into the VH. We'll select that. Now you can see this shows 400, but you can kind of ignore that because it doesn't actually update correctly. What we can do now is we can adjust this to whatever value we want. And if you kind of consider this as being a percentage of the overall screen the space that you have. So for this example, let's set it to something like 50. And that's basically going to give us about half of the screen size with the actual header itself inside. So VH is perfectly fine. Column position we'll set and make sure that's set to middle. And you can see we don't have to worry about things like column gaps. Now, let's just quickly explain what the content width option does. We have two settings inside there, boxed, and we have full width. Now, we're going to set a background image for this entire section, for our hero section. But we want the content that's inside it to stay in the middle. 
you can see we've got this little serrated box with the plus in the middle of it. If we set that to be full width, you'll see that will now go right the way out to the side of our screen. So anything we put inside there would stretch and contract based upon the size of the screen, but it will always fill the entire width of it. Whereas boxed will work its value based upon the standard value set, value set up as part of the overall settings, which is around about 1140 pixels, somewhere around there. But you can completely override that by using the width setting inside here. So if you wanted to, you can see we can adjust this. And as we adjust the slider, you can see the actual boxed container will actually expand and contract based upon the setting. If we go ahead and remove that completely, that will now just take up 100%. So we're going to leave that set like that. Next thing we want to do is put a background image inside here so we can have a nice hero image and we can put some text over the top. To do that, we're going to hop into the style section. Under background, we're going to set this to normal and we have four different options. We can choose a classic, which will give us a color or an image. We've got a gradient, we've got a video, and we've also got a slideshow. For this example, we're going to keep it simple and just use the classic option. We're then going to choose the image option from there. And I've already gone ahead and uploaded a couple of images. So this is going to be about travel. So we're going to just choose this very first hero image that I've got set up. We'll just set this to be hero by just putting some alt text in for good SEO options. And we'll set insert media. Now that inserts the image. But as you can see, it looks a little bit wrong. But we have full control over all of those background settings. You can see underneath the image, we have position, attachment, repeat, and size. The position allows us to control where this sits inside the container or inside the section, I should say. So if we say something like center center, it'll look at the center of the image and position that in the center of our section. In a lot of cases, that might be perfectly fine. But as you can see, most of the image that we want to draw attention to is actually in the center bottom. So we go in down and choose the option for bottom center. You can see that now gives us everything we need. It's still a little bit squashed up we kind of lose in parts of it but again we're going to deal with that in a moment next up is the attachment we can set this to be scroll so it'll scroll with the page or we can set it to fixed to create a sort of parallax effect again in this example we're going to set this to be scroll or you can set it as a default which is generally scroll you repeat we don't want any kind of repeat on this but if you were dealing with a pattern that had a repeating element you could repeat this on the X and the Y or repeat it on both X and Y. For this example, though, we're going to set it to no repeat because it's one single image. And then we have the size option. Now, this is currently set to default, but we have four options to choose from. Auto, cover, contain, and custom. For this example, we want to make sure that it says cover because this will then cover the actual section itself. Once we do that, you can see now the image is brought in slightly and we get to see and focus on the key parts of the image that we want. If we choose any of the other ones, for example, contain, we'll try to contain the image inside the container, but not adjusting the aspect ratio of it. So you can see it sits inside the container, but because it's different to the actual width of the page, it kind of just gives us the image. Custom allows us to do exactly as this name suggests. We can apply a custom value based on pixels, percentages, those kinds of things. Let's set this back to be the option for cover. And that gives us exactly what we want. We're not going to worry about things like scrolling effects and so on. But if you wanted to get into some animation effects and things, you could use those options inside you. That's more than what I want to cover in this tutorial. Background overlay, as his name would suggest, allows us to place an overlay over the image itself. And this is great if you want text on top of it to stand a little better. And that's exactly what we want. So let's just choose the first option for classic one more time. We can ignore the image, but if you wanted to stack one image on top of the other for quite a cool effect, you could do that if you wanted. We're going to set this just to be a simple color. We're going to choose the option for our little global colors, and we're going to set global black. And as you can see, that now puts a black overlay based upon the opacity slider that we have below. Currently, this is operating at about 50%. So you can see if we take it to the left-hand side, more of the image will show through, and the overall background overlay becomes less apparent. And as we ramp it up, you can see it becomes more apparent. So find what works for the image so you get a nice balance between the image and whatever you're going to place on top. So let's go for about 40%, somewhere around there. That looks pretty good. But we can come back and adjust if we want to. So there's our hero section. Let's go ahead now and add in some content to put on top. Let's just click the plus, and we're going to add in a heading. So we'll pop that inside there. Now, obviously, you can't see this very well because it's blue on a almost black background. But we can override that, no problem at all. Let's first of all set the center alignment. We're going to set this to be H1 because this is going to be the primary call to action heading for this particular page. And now what we can do is we can just change the title 
Uh, we could edit that either inside here or like we saw inside the actual widget itself. So we're gonna just call this travel blog. Let's have a bit of fun with the typography though. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and set our color to be white for the moment. Our typography, we're gonna change from the normal default font. We're gonna set this to something different. Let's set this to something like Playfair display. Let's give that a try. So that gives us a kind of quite a funky looking font. We'll bump the weight on this up slightly. Let's get to something nice and weighty if we can get something on there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next up, we're gonna go to the transform. We're gonna set this to be uppercase so it gets a nice big slap bang in your face kind of setup. And we're gonna adjust the letter spacing. So we're just gonna spread that out a little bit to give it a kind of stylized look. I like the look of that. Now then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little bit of fun now with some new effects. So we're gonna use the text stroke. We'll select the option for text stroke and we're gonna set this to be one. Now you can't see anything and we'll set the color to white in this example as well. They can't really see anything because we put a white stroke on a white text. But if we come back to our text color, we drop the opacity right down on this, you can see we get quite a funky looking effect. And we can, if we want to, increase that text stroke if it's not strong enough. To kind of bump it up, you can see, there we go. If you want to, you can easily combine the text effect and the text color together. So let's just change this from that white. We'll set this to be global black, for example, but then we'll adjust the opacity. So we kind of get this semi-transparent see-through look, which is kind of cool. Let's adjust the text stroke. Let's take that back down to about one. There we go. So now you can see we've got quite a stylized look. Now, at the moment, that looks okay where we've got the text sitting in the middle over the top of our subject, but let's say we wanted to push that down to sit down below, so it's a little bit lower in the design. Well, we can do that easily. Let's just select our section, come out to our layout, and currently you can see everything is set to be in middle, so column position is middle. If we set that to bottom, you can see that now pushes that down to the bottom. And if we want to, we can come into the padding, for example, and we can add some padding into the bottom of this. So let's say 30 pixels of padding. That will make things a little bit bigger, but also give us a little bit of breathing space underneath. And that's how easy it is to create these kinds of effects. So let's just say we're happy with the way that looks. So there's the first part. There's our hero section already created. Let's go ahead now and add in another section, and we're going to have three key sections for our travel blog. So what we're going to do is we're going to click to add in a new section. We're going to go ahead and choose this three-column section. We'll select the overall section one more time, come into advanced, and now we're going to pop in some margin to give us some space between our hero section and these three different sort of aspects of our blog. So make sure these are linked together, and we're going to set a space of about 70 pixels. There we go. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can build these up very quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus, we're going to choose an image. We're going to drag that into the layout. We'll leave the settings on there for a moment because there's a couple of parts to this I want to use. And I want to show you two ways in which you can do these things. So let's come back up now. Let's grab a heading. We're going to add that heading inside there. We'll set that to something like H3. And again, we can adjust the size of this if we want to. And then underneath that, we're going to come in and add one more option, which is our text area. So you can see we've created this sort of section that has an image, some text, and some text again underneath it, basically. So now if you wanted to, you can easily come in, we can set our image, we'll choose our image from here, we'll grab our first one, we'll insert our media, we'll go ahead and adjust this, and we'll put our title inside there. And we'll just leave the text underneath, that's perfectly fine for now. But obviously you'd fill this out with information to do with exactly what this particular section is about. Now, what we can do is we can easily right click on any of these and choose duplicate or use the keyboard shortcut. And we can duplicate that, pop that over there. We could duplicate the sailing, for example. Uh, exactly the same then underneath, we can duplicate that as well. And then we can just move these over and make any changes we want to them. So choose the image, grab the scuba dive in, change the title. So as you can see, it's very quick and easy to build these kinds of sections up. So I'm gonna quickly do the third and final one. Okay, so there we go. There's our three sections that are the different blog sections we're gonna have on our site. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and change any aspect of this we want. So if you wanted to make some animation effects when people hover over it, make the images links, those kinds of things, we can do all of that. So let's choose this first image. We'll select it. 
We'll make sure that we can set a link on there so we can see we can go to none media file or custom URL. So once we create our different categories, we can simply drop that information inside there and link that up to whatever we want, which is good because then the end user can click on sailing and look at all the blog posts for sailing. So we'll circle back around and take a look at that in a moment. So now we've created our design, we can go ahead and start to get a bit more creative with what we can do. So for example, let's say we want to add in a little bit of a hover effect when someone hovers over any of these different sections, which would be our blog sections, our blog categories, there'll be a little bit of an animation to show them something's happening. Select the image, come over into advanced and inside there we've got an option for transform. We can come into transform and we can transform the image in various different ways on both the normal, in other words, the way you see it, a standard and the hover effect. As you can see, there's a range of different options inside you, which I don't want to go into. I would recommend playing about with these. But let's take a look at a simple example and how easy it is to set up. Let's choose hover. And what we're going to do is now we're going to set the option for scale. So we click on the little arrow or the little pencil, I should say, you can see you've got the option for keep proportion, so it won't scale it in a weird way. And then what we can do is we can set the scale. So you can see anything that we go below one will mean that when you go over it, it'll shrink in size. Anything you do to go over one will start to grow in size when you hover over. So it's up to you how you'd want to do it. So let's say we want this to sort of just shrink back a little bit. We'll set this to 0.9. When we mouse over, you can see it now shrinks a little bit. That's pretty cool. And if we want to make the transition a little slower or a little quicker, we can do that by using the transition duration in milliseconds. So for example, if we set that to about 1200 milliseconds, that's 1 1.2 seconds. So it'll be a lot slower when you mouse over it compared to the original effect. You can wrap that right the way up and it becomes incredibly slow. Or you can take this right away over and make it quite quick. So let's set this to something like about 600. That looks pretty good. Now, obviously, I don't want to go through the hassle of doing that every single time if we've got multiple different options. So what we can do is we can right click on this image and say copy. Now we can go over to the next image, select it, right click one more time and choose paste style. Or again, you can use the keyboard shortcut. Click that on there. And now we've got the hover effect is all set up. Do the same thing for the last one, paste style. And you can see that now adds in that animation effect. So anything we set up inside our styles, can be easily copied and pasted to any other element on the page. It's really quick and simple. So that's how easy it is to go ahead and add in animation, hover effects, those kinds of things. You can get really creative and have a lot of fun with these kinds of things. Okay, so this is our homepage is now starting to take shape. The next thing I want to do is create a dynamic section underneath that's going to pull in our recent posts. And to do that, we're going to use the posts option. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new section. We'll add that first section inside here. So we're going to create this as just one simple section. That adds that in. We've already set the spacing for the section above, so we don't need to worry too much about that in this instance. We'll select it. What we're going to do is we're going to put in a title. So we're going to grab the heading option, pop that underneath there. We'll set this to be something like H4. Actually, let's set that to H3. We'll set this to be center aligned, and we'll just go ahead and type in our latest posts. So people are going to know exactly what this section is all about. So now let's go back to our widgets, and let's go and find the posts option. And we're going to drag that and position that underneath. And there we go. As you can see, we've now got six of our latest posts being displayed on screen. Now there's a couple of things we need to address on here. First of all, I want to just change the look of these and go ahead and customize exactly what information is being displayed, what's not, those kinds of things. So what we need to do is make sure that this widget is selected. And you can see down on the left hand side, we have an absolute shared load of options to choose from. We can choose a skin, which is basically just how does this actually look? Let's choose cards, for example. And to me, that already looks considerably better, but you could use whatever you wanted. We've also got the option for full content. And as you can see, that's pretty kind of basic. So we're going to go back to the cards option. We can now set up the number of columns, so we can set this to be one through to six. So we might want to have these as being bigger features. For this example, let's set that back to three because that looked pretty good. We can set up how many posts we want per page. So currently it's set to six, but if we wanted to only have three, for example, we could do exactly that. So we can set that to be three. We can also go ahead and if we find the images don't look great, we can change those over and get a slightly larger version to get a nice higher quality version of it. We can also go ahead and adjust things like the image ratio. So you can see we can adjust the way this all looks. So I think that looks a little bit better. We can also set up the title tags. So we're going to set this to be H4. 
We can also go and set whether we want the excerpt to show up or not. So we might only want to have the title and nothing much more than that. We'll put the excerpt back on. You can even apply a custom excerpt inside you if you want to. And you can also go ahead then and you can add in or take away any kind of metadata. So you can see if we click on the plus, we can add things like the author, the date, time, comments, and those kinds of things. And we can also easily get rid of anything. So we don't want the comments. We can take that off from there. And you see, we can now go in and we can add something else in. Like we could say we wanted to have like the date modified, for example. And there we go. So you can easily set these up, change the read more text, all those kinds of things. Even set up things like badges, whether you want the avatar to show up. So if it's just you posting, probably kind of pointless to have the avatar. So you can disable that. You can even come in and go ahead and just set up the kind of query. You know, the query just allows you to set up what is showing on here. So you may only want to have specific kinds of categories showing up. And we can say include by, we could say term, we'll choose that option. And then we'll just go ahead and set this to be something like news, for example. And you can see category news. And that will now filter it out to show only the category of our posts that match news. And then we can set things like the date, the order by, the order, whether it's ascending or descending, whether to ignore sticky posts, all those kinds of good things. And finally, we've got the pagination option. So obviously, if you have more posts on here, you'd want to give the people the ability to quickly go and take a look at those other posts, at which point you could easily use the pagination option. And you could set things like infinite scroll, load on click, those kinds of things. So let's choose load on click. We'll get a load more button. And then when you click on it, it'll then load in more posts that meet the criteria until it runs out of posts that you can have. For this example, though, I just want to show the latest ones. We're going to set that to be none. OK, so now that we've set the post, we just need to fine tune a few bits and pieces. Obviously, this yellow text on the white background doesn't really stand out. So we can just jump into the style section. And inside there, we can come into card, for example, and you can adjust the card itself. You can come into the image and adjust the image. And finally, you can come into the content and adjust the content options in there. So the title, for example, let's go ahead and set that to be, for example, our primary color. That now looks a little bit better. We can come into the typography and default is going to pick up the style in the screen used for the site itself. And we can also go in and adjust the sizing on this. So we might say we want this to be a little smaller. For example, we could set that to be 18. We could set the weight on there to be a little bit heavier. And you can adjust the line height, those kinds of things. And the same goes for the read more. You can see there's our read more. So we can do is we can simply come in, we can choose one of our global colors. So we can say we wanted this global black, for example, and you can adjust that and do what you want on this. So you have full control over how this all looks. But we're now starting to integrate more advanced content into our homepage and creating something a little bit more unique. That's pretty cool. Now what we can also do is we can come into this entire section. We can select it. We're going to come into advanced. We're going to unlink these. And in the top and the bottom, we're going to add a little bit of spacing. So let's just say something like 30 pixels top and bottom. Then we're going to come into style and inside there we're going to pop in a background overlay. So we can come into our classic option. We can come in and choose a color. So for example, this primary color, we can select that. And then what we can do is we can easily come in and adjust the opacity on there to create something quite subtle. And if you wanted to get really creative, you can also come into the shape dividers option. And there we can apply shape dividers to the top and the bottom of our design. So we come in, we can say we want to put mountains in there. And you see that now creates this sort of mountainous effect behind our top section. And we can adjust the width of this, the height of it, so you can fine tune and tweak it. So we go for something like that. And then what we're going to do is going to go to the bottom. We're going to do the same thing again there. We'll put mountains inside there. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see the effect. We'll adjust the height a little bit on there to make it a little bit easier to see. And we'll also flip this around so it gives us a little bit of difference to the top one. And then if we need to, we might want to put a little bit more space in. So we could come into advanced. And we can adjust the spacing on there. And we say something like 50 pixels. So that gives us a bit more space to see that. OK, so we've now created our custom homepage. We've inserted our latest posts. We've got different custom sections on there. So we're kind of getting somewhere with this now. So let's go ahead and publish this. And next, we need to set this as our homepage. To do that, we're simply going to come out of here, go back and exit to our dashboard, go into our settings, come into reading. And inside there, you can see the home page is currently set as a static page, and it's using that sample home page that was installed as part of the Elementor Cloud. Let's go and change that to our custom home page. Save our changes, and we've now created our custom home page. Let's go and check that out. And if we take a look, there's our custom home page. You can see there's our travel blog, there's our images with our hover effect, there's our latest posts which we could then go and take a look at, and anything else we want to add into our design. So we're kind of starting to get somewhere now. Still needs a little bit of refinement to tidy things up, make it look a little bit neater and tidier, but you're kind of getting a feel for how these pieces go together.
Okay, so now that we've seen how to start building our pages, there's a couple of things we need to address. First of all, if we open up one of our latest posts and click on it, you see it takes us through to a page that looks, well, kind of rubbish. And the same thing goes if we take a look at opening up one of the different categories like our scuba diving and so on. So we need to address that. We need to create a couple of templates. So let me show you how to do that. Let's hop back over into our dashboard. What we're going to do is we're going to come into the templates option again. We're going to come into our theme builder. And because we're dealing with a blog, we need to make sure that we set up an archive template and a single post template. Now, an archive template will list all of the posts inside a particular category. For example, scuba diving, sailing, and so on. However, the single post is where we'll see the actual post itself. So when you go in and take a look at a post about scuba diving, that's the template that's going to be used there. Now, you can build these totally from scratch, and you can use the simple way of working with the templates that you have as part of Elementor Pro. So let's take a look at that. First of all, let's take a look at creating the archive option. So again, we're going to come into our templates, click plus on the archive. That will then take us straight into the browser for our library. And as you can see, we've got a selection of pre-built, pre-designed layouts. So we could use these as a starting point if we wanted to. And you can see there's quite a few different options inside Joe we can pick from. Some use template files, some are just basically blank files. So what we're going to do is we're going to find one that works quite well for our particular example. Let's say we like the look of this one. We'll click on insert. And you see that now loads everything in for us. A couple of things we need to address because this is pulling in its own custom styles and so on is to get rid of those custom styles and make sure this all looks the way that we want. Easiest way of doing that is we simply come over, select this entire archive post section, and we can come up to the skin and we can change this over to cards. So it's basically going to match the same as we just created. And now what we need to do is quickly go through, change the various pieces of information to make sure it all matches the same as our other example. So we'll quickly come in and set all the styles and everything inside here, or we could obviously copy and paste if we had the other one open. So there we go. We've now gone ahead and customized the archive page. So what we need to do is click on publish on here. This is going to bring up the option for our conditions. So we just need to set the condition we want. So we're going to click on add condition, and we're going to set this to be all archives. So every single archive that's used on our site regardless of whether it's sailing, scuba diving, or anything else, or anything we may create in the future, they're all going to use exactly the same template. So we'll say save and close, and that's the template for our archive setup. So now what we can do is we can hop back out of here, exit back to our dashboard, and we're going to repeat the same procedure. Come back into our theme builder. Inside there, we're going to choose the option for single post. And what we can do is we can simply use one of the pre-designed designs from here if we want to. And again, you can see there's a range of different options to choose from. So we can find something that we think is relatively close to what we want. Let's say this one looks good. We can modify this anyway. So we'll use this as a starting point. So again, we'll click on Insert. That will download all the assets, set everything up. And you see, there's the basic layout. So now we can go ahead and we can edit any or all of these widgets to get exactly what we want from our design. So if we don't like any of the colors, we can change those either on a global level or we can do it on an individual widget level. But let's just say we're happy with the look of this because I don't want to waste your time go through every single setting. I've shown you how to use most of those so you can now fine tune and tweak to get exactly what you want. We'll click on publish on this. Again, we need to add that condition. So we'll click on add condition. All singular is perfectly fine, but if you wanted to change that to specific designs for specific post categories, those kinds of things, you have a ton of options inside you. But for this, for simplicity, let's just set this to be all singular becomes a catch all then for all our single posts. Click on save and close. And that's now set everything up for us. We've created the archive template and we've created the single post template. So let's take a look now to see exactly how they work. And there we go. If we take a look now, here's our homepage, as you can see, Everything is set up the way we saw. If we want to, we can go ahead now into any of these different posts. We we'll click, and as you can see, there's the design we've just used, our template, which, like I say, we can easily come in and customize any aspect of this. Our foot is in place. Let's go back to our home page. Okay, so the final thing we need to address now is to set up these three different sections on our home page to link those through to the relevant categories. To do that is a little bit of a workaround, but once you kind of see how easy it is to do it, it's relatively straightforward. So let's go back into our dashboard. Let's come into our dashboard from here. We're going to go into posts and into categories. Now inside there, you can see there's all the categories we've created. News we're going to leave as a catch-all. We're not too worried about that, but paragliding, sailing, and scuba diving are on our homepage. We want to link through to the archive for those. Now the easiest thing to do is to simply click on view. And then what we can do is we can just copy the actual link 
from here. So we'll grab that link, we'll copy it, we'll hop back over into Elementor, into our page, so we'll edit this front page, our home page with Elementor. We'll come down to our paragliding, which is the first one we've copied, we'll select it, we'll come over to the left hand side, open up the link option and change that to custom URL, and then simply paste that inside there. And there we go. We can now repeat the same procedure for the scuba diving and the sailing. So the final thing we want to do is update our navigation to make sure that people can find the content on our site very easily. Now the way that WordPress works is we can create a kind of catch-all page for our blog and then just assign it to becoming the blog. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If we come into the settings option and into reading one more time, like we saw, we can set a custom home page up. We can do also the same thing for our post page. So we select this, you can see currently we have the home page and the sample home page available. We want to create something for our blogs. So let's come into pages, click add new. We're just going to call this blog and we're simply going to publish it. Nothing more than that. Now we can head back over into our settings. So come under settings into reading. This time, under the post page, we're going to select the option for blog. Click Save Changes, and that's basically it. Now we can go ahead and we can create our navigation. So let's go into Appearance and into Menus. And from there now, we can go ahead and we can find any of the pages. So we say View All for our pages. There's our blog. We're going to click on that, add that to our menu. We're also going to quickly update our home page just to say Home, just to change the label on there. And now what we can do is we can actually nest navigation inside that blog section. So if we come into the categories, there's all of our categories for our blog that we've created, scuba diving, news, those kinds of things. Let's select all of those, add those to our menu, and now we just need to simply indent these underneath blog, and that will create a sub-menu. So by doing that, we've now created a new blog entry that will show all of our posts, or we can allow people to go into any of the different categories that our posts sit under. Now we just need to click on Save Changes, and we head back over to our site. There's our navigation updated, there's our homepage. Go blog, you can see scuba diving, news, paragliding, and so on. Now obviously we can customize the look of this, it needs a little bit of tweaking, but we've seen how to do that inside Elementor anyway. Let's come down and say paragliding, and there's our paragliding section. And if we click on blog itself, that will just basically show us everything. It's that catch-all page that'll show us all of the posts on our site. So we've now set up the homepage, We've created templates for the headers and footers. We've customized the homepage. We've linked through to various different blog categories. We've inserted our latest posts into our homepage, which is all dynamically generated. So we set everything we need up, including our menu system. Now, this is a really simple example of how to get started, but the core things you need to understand to build a WordPress website using Elementor has all been covered. Now, hopefully this has given you a good head start into how to get started building some of these pages and starting to create something from scratch for yourself. You can get as creative as you want using the basics that I've covered today and just delving a little bit deeper. Now, I've covered Elementor in a lot of detail and I've put a link to the playlist in the description below alongside all the other links you need for this tutorial. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats and until next time, take care.